snook are one of those fish that kind of skirt that edge between what we call a game fish and what we might call an eating fish. I'm completely catch and release. I'm very cautious about how I handle the fish. It's so much fun being able to meet them in their habitat. Snook really are the bomb fish. There are a lot of different ways you can target those fish, depending on what size fish you're going for, what time of year, and really what part of the watershed you happen to be on. The bite is always going to be different. It's so fun to, to be able to chase them down. Once they reach about 30 inches, you're like, OK, this is a cool fish. But if you catch a 35-inch snook, it's a whole nother level. Sometimes they win, sometimes you win. I just love the challenge. They fight, they, they pull the line, dragging you around. It, it really is an experience. Snook is a warm water game fish. It's a fish that primarily uh, does best in water temperatures that very rarely get below 70 degrees. It's, some would say it's a tropical fish. And the peninsula of Florida is really the only place in the continental United States where you can catch these fish with any assurance. Snook are definitely a structure-oriented fish, kind of in the same way that largemouth bass are often associated with structure. Vegetation, down things in the water. But the big thing with snook is mangroves. The extent of red mangroves in Florida is pretty much the boundary of snook habitat. Where you find red mangroves, you're going to find snook. Snook fishing for me really became a thing once I started kayaking because the kayak allowed me to, to push off from the shore and do my own thing. Kayaks are great up in the mangrove habitat because they're quiet. You, know, you get back in those quiet coves with an outboard engine, and frequently that'll put the snook off. But a sneaky kayak getting back in there, it puts you in a great position to catch those fish. I think it's just a very intimate setting for approaching those fish. Uh, and I think it's, you know, it's pretty rewarding. Snook are one of those fish that kind of skirt that edge between what we call a game fish and what we might call an eating fish. The truth is they're delicious. The truth is also they're a lot of fun to catch. Now, Florida has, you know, very tight regulations on those snook. Growing up in Florida, you know, I've really gotten to experience kind of the ebbs and flows of, of the snook fishery. Um, you know, a lot of the issues that we see can be uh, man-made issues that we've created, but we also have a lot of natural issues that can occur, like deep freezes, where it freezes off mangrove, really kills a lot of the habitat. We had a big freeze in Florida, and we lost so many snook that it was, they were floating everywhere dead. So that's when I stopped even thinking about keeping snook. And that's when I started kind of encouraging catch and release. What the state of Florida did is it basically went to the angling public and asked them, you know, what do you guys want to see out of your snook fishery? Do you want to see lots of little fish? Do you want to see more big fish? Obviously, everybody wants to see sustainable snook. So the state took that to the biologists who understood the dynamics of the spawning season. They understood the limitations of habitat, forage, the life cycle of those fish. And they came up with these regulations to bring about those desired outcomes. And here we are a few years later after they changed those regulations. And by most measures, those fisheries are achieving those desired outcomes. I'm completely catch and release. I'm very cautious about how I handle the fish. Cradle it in your hands, both hands. Don't hold it up and it gets very hot, so you have to be extra cautious and get them in pretty quick. You've got to do your best to, to maintain the safety for the fish. It's so much fun being able to meet them in their habitat. Like, this is their, this is their home and you're just a guest. And I think that's so important for sportsmen, anglers, and even just everyday citizens to be involved and to be concerned about the future of that fishery to make sure that not just the snook fishery is there for, for generations to come, but also all the other fisheries that depend on those um, fragile ecosystems.